uh, one other thing happened over the weekend, and it got calmed down yesterday. But Corey Perry and Evander Kane had their discussion. We'll call it on the bench. I think there was one person having a discussion. The other <laughs> one was listening. What What did you make of that situation? And I guess, is, have you been around anything like that before where maybe it, someone is calling him out so aggressively we'll call it on the bench? Yeah, run the clip, AB, too. I'll just tell you right now, I grew up in the league this way, and I was on some on some teams where the bench was like a war zone. It was worse than on the ice. Like if you missed a pass, you'd have seven guys down your throat. You'd be, you know, is swear words allowed on this? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I dropped an f bomb earlier. You, it's fine. Okay, great. You'd be, you'd be, you'd be getting motherfucked. You'd be motherfucking guys. You'd be screaming at the forwards. Wake up! You'd be getting yelled back. We'll make a pass. And and it, it's, I think for me, like I just think I'm more engaged when it's that way. And and I think you keep guys engaged. And guys like Kaner, I think need that. Uh, you know, I think Perry's the perfect guy to have on that team because Kaner's one of those guys. And you know, listen, I'll give him his flowers. He's more, he's one of the more talented shooters, power forwards in the NHL. But he can get disinterested if he's not the focal point of offense and he's not kind of catered to. And it's nothing against him at all. I just think he he needs to. There's guys in the league that need to play a lot of minutes to be effective. And when they're not getting those minutes, they're not. They don't like it and it's it's you know listen we all want to play heavy minutes and but he's more effective when he's kind of playing when he's engaged so i think having Corey perry there is is phenomenal i don't think there's anything to it other than he was yelling at him and and kaner was probably giving it to giving it right back to him which i think kaner should but that's a good thing like they need a guy on that bench that can give it to kaner because i think it'll help kaner and, and whether kaner wants to admit it or not like I, you know i have a huge respect for his game but it's good to have those guys that can cattle prod certain guys because, you know, a coach might not be able to get that out of him, but Corey Perry with his statue and what he's done in his career, like he can sit there and be like, Hey, like that's not good enough. Like we need better. And then maybe Leon and Connor can't quite, you know, they're, they're more lead from by example, they'll kind of yell and stuff, but you need a guy like Corey that can grab, grab him by the scruff and, and just tell him like, Hey, let's go. And, and for Kaner, I think it's, it, it's he probably likes that as well because he might need that and then you know i thought he played a great game and, and it's one of those things it's i think him and and perry are huge x factors for this playoff run like they need those two guys with fire every game because they're the guys that are going to pull the other team you know get them distracted and, and, and kind of pull them out of their game and, and allow this these top guys on offensively to kind of like like Leon Connor uh, Hyman, just allow those guys to kind of operate freely, and and they're gonna play maybe a more undercover, not as say you know not a how would I put that word like it just not a game that's gonna like get tons of accolades, but it's gonna be effective, and it's gonna be the difference in them winning the cup or not winning the cup. So I think it's. I wouldn't worry about it. I know it's fun in Canada for the media love seeing that because they get to, they get to jump all over it and it's a talking point for three days. But I was I played with Joe Thornton and I mean I got I never heard a guy ream out. I got reamed out every game and every practice and and made me better. And you you see which guys are competitors and which guys aren't. So and Kana responded great to it. So more power to him. And and I thought. The way they handled it in the media was phenomenal. You know, they're like we're brothers. It's it's we fight, and that's should be it should be dead at that. So it, it's really encouraging for me to see that. And they're partners in the Masters pool that the team's that doing true, this yes. week. So that's a big bonding moment as well. That um, is. <laughs> we were talking about you're talking about Corey Perry and the impact. I mean, impact in the room, notable. He's a guy who's come in. He's scoring at like an 18, 19 goal pace over 82 games with the Oilers. I know we hopped in midway through the year. The other thing, too, and you touched on it, is his ability to get under the skin of the other team. You spent a bulk of your career in the Pacific Division battling Corey Perry. Is is that like a legit factor? And can you tell us about maybe a moment or something you remember Corey Perry always doing that really drove you nuts? Well, I always kind of, when I played, I, I, I had that in me as well. So I always kind of knew guys like that that were a little bit borderline on the on the edge and I'd try to go after them and he's such a big guy and uh 
you know, I'm, I'm sure we had a ton of battles, you know, those years with Anaheim and San Jose was, was some amazing rivalries because we were such both great teams and it, they had such a great roster with Bobby Ryan and, and Getzlaff and Niedemeyer Pronger. I mean, the list goes on and on, but yeah, he just, he's just a rat. Like it's just, it just is what it is. Like he knows he's so good at timing when the refs aren't looking to just give you a shot or at the right time of the game, he just bumps you in a certain way that just pisses you off. And guys like that are, are hard to play against because you want to take a run at them and, and kill them. But you're also like, you know, they know what's going on in the ice. He's a great player as well. It's not like he's a rat and a bad hockey player. Like he's very skilled. He's on an 18, 19 goal pace. And, he knows where his body is in space and where the guys are on the ice. So it's not like he's easily hittable. So you're also like kind of get frustrated in that way. Cause you're like trying to chase him around. You can't chase him around the ice. Cause he's got a great stick net front and he can score goals. So you're like this son of a bitch. <laughs> it's just more maddening than anything. So he's a huge role. I, I think it was such a great pickup uh, by Ken Holland and the brain trust to bring him in and, He's going to be a big factor come playoff time for sure, which he's, he has been on every team he's played on in his the latter part of his career. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube podcast, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it. So hammer that subscribe button.